the gospel is the unconditional good news of salvation that Christ has obtained for all of humanity by virtue of his holy history, his birth, his life, his death, and his resurrection. This being communion service, the reason that you are here, the reason that we are here, as I've mentioned in my prayer already, is to hear God's voice. There's no other reason that you have chosen to come and worship before us this morning and partake of the communion service because this communion service speaks only of what Jesus has accomplished for each one of us. So you're, you are here this morning because you recognize that. You are going to participate this morning because you recognize that and you have accepted. Jesus Christ is the only source of salvation. If you are here for any other reason, it is my prayer that the Holy Spirit speaks to you this morning because there's no other reason other than to worship him. The unconditional good news of the salvation that Christ has attained is referred to as the objective fact of salvation and is a finished and complete work, completed work to which we have made and can make no contribution whatsoever. It is entirely the work of God. Again, this is what we are celebrating and acknowledging this morning when we partake of the communion service. Now, this picture has a story behind of it. Many of you may know the story. Um, I'm not going to share that story with you, uh, at least today, but um, I will at another time because there's a second picture that goes along with this. But Christ sacrificed is not merely a provisional, but is effective and it is actual for the entire world. So that the only reason that anyone can be lost is that they have chosen to resist the saving grace of God. For those who are saved at last, it is God who has taken the initiative. In the case of those who are lost, it is they who have taken the initiative. Salvation is by faith. Condemnation is by unbelief. Many Christians have been raised up to believe that Christ did not actually save anyone on the cross, but simply made a provision for the salvation of us. That unless we take the initiative, and believe and repent and such as turn away from our sins and confess our sins, we stand as lost or condemned sinners before God. Society teaches and supports the same thought. Don't do your chores, you don't get an allowance. Don't perform, you're not rewarded. But scripture shows that Christ's life and death actually did something for the human race actually change mankind's part or past. Because each of us are corporately identified with Christ's humanity, his life and death became our life and death. In him, we live a perfect life. In him, we died the penalty for sin. When Christ died, all died. He tasted death for everyone. Therefore, there's no reason why anyone should die the second death except that they've resisted or they've rejected the salvation that's already been given to them in Christ. We're going to share a couple of texts. Matthew 1, verse 21. She will bring forth a son. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. I want you to take a look at... Um, certain parts in these texts that we share. He will save his people from their sins. The next one is Matthew 18. For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. If anyone hears my words, Jesus says, and does not believe, I do not judge him. For I did not come to judge the world, 
but to save the world. Now, all things are of God. Second Corinthians says, Paul says, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the, wor um, the word of reconciliation. After these few texts, is it fair for me to ask the question, was Jesus successful in his mission? It says that he came to save the world. Did he accomplish what he came to do? Is that a fair question to ask after we've read those four or five texts? What was our condition when he accomplished what he came to do? Romans 5, verses 6 through 10, Paul says, For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. So in this text alone, we find that we were without strength to save ourselves. We are ungodly. But Paul continues. But God demonstrated his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. So we are now, we can add to that list, we are sinners or were sinners. Romans 5, he ends with, for if when uh, we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Unable to save ourselves, we were sinners, we were ungodly. Now he says, while we were enemies, this is when Jesus saved us. Continuing, a couple more texts, Titus says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared only to those who believe or only to those who are good. Is that what it says? It says, has appeared to all men. Timothy says, for this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Again, to save sinners. Timothy continues, Paul continues in Timothy, he who gave himself a ransom for all to be tested in due time. So well, now we see that Christ was a ransom for all. He continues, for to this end, we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, but especially of those who believe. It's a clarifying word. I'm not trying to implicate that there's a universal salvation that everybody's going to be saved, but Paul clarifies that especially those who accept and believe by faith what Jesus has done will be saved at last. And he himself is the propitiation or the mercy seat or the atonement or the lid of the ark, not only for ours only, but also for the whole world. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with the glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. So then the other question, did he merely make a provision for our salvation or did he actually save us? So why does it matter that we understand that? Does it make a difference to know whether what Jesus done is, is something that I have to um, repent my sins before it becomes mine or whether he actually has given me salvation? What difference does it make? And is there a difference at all? One word, basically, is motivation. If I'm not motivated by his love, what is it then that I'm motivated by? Selfishness, right? If there's something that I think that I have to do, then there's, there's a part that I have to play in my salvation. 
But when I recognized that even though I was a sinner, even though I was the enemy, even though I was ungodly, even though that, that I was unable to do anything for myself, that Jesus saved me in that condition, that was the reason he came. Something has already been accomplished for me. It is mine. This is what we are celebrating this morning. These are just not pieces of bread and a little bit of grape juice. This has a depth to what I am responding to, what I am saying to him. Do I really believe this? Or do I think that there's a part that I have to play? What would compel me otherwise than his love? Well, if I do my chores, I get an allowance. Yay for me, right? If I do my part, I'll get paid. Yay for me. I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. It's the love of Christ, Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians, that compels me. Because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died. We have died for Christ, but we are alive in Christ, again, because of what he has already accomplished for us. We love him. This is where the service really comes in because we recognize and understand that he first loved us. This is what this service speaks about, is his love for you and I. If we are missing his love, again, it's, then it's just something that we do every quarter. So making the point again, the good news is that God has already redeemed, saved, or reconciled to himself the entire human race in Christ. And only those who insist on resisting the convictions of the Holy Spirit will be lost. But since this salvation is a gift from God, it's made effective by faith. This is what you guys are talking about, or what the, the quarterly is about this quarter in the book of Galatians, speaking about faith. It's only made effective by faith to the believers in Christ. Paul says, you read through this text this morning, I, I believe, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live. I've asked this question probably before. If this is Paul speaking, was he one of the two thieves that was crucified with Christ on the cross? He wasn't, was he? So what is he talking about here? Paul's identifying himself with Christ, recognizing that he was identified as part of the human race with what tri Christ experienced on the cross. This is why he could say, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer me, my selfish desires, um, 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 that lives. My urges, my drives, but it's Christ now who lives in me. So the life that I now live in flesh, I live by faith. And the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So our salvation does not depend on our initiating a relationship with him. It depends on our believing or responding to the relationship that he has already initiated with us. An illustration may be Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation of 1863 illustrates this justification for all men. Lincoln granted every slave in the Confederate territories to a legal freedom, but none could or would experience it until they, number one, heard the good news, number two, believed the good news, or number three, let it motivate him to walk off into liberty. The same with Christ. It's my prayer that as we celebrate this, the service this morning, that we recognize that the freedom that Jesus has given to us and we also recognize how totally dependent 
we are to him. And as we let self die, we recognize that the only place that we have to go is the foot of the cross. It's my prayer.